This is the weekly sales meeting for April 7th, 2024. My name is Chris Fleming. You can reach me at chris at cdmediaconsulting.com or go to our website at cdmediaconsulting.com. Today's topic, control the conversation. The biggest difference between weak sellers and strong sellers is the ability to control the conversation. Weak sellers get dominated while strong sellers control the tempo, tone, and temperament. Weak sellers allow themselves to be pushed around. They will give up long before the exchange is finished. There's a book out there on how to run a business that most have read. In this book, in chapter 4, paragraph 7, there's a whole section on how to get rid of a media sales rep, and weak sellers are easily dismissed by the techniques described there. Strong sellers, on the other hand, can be immediately comfortable in any setting. For a select few, this is a natural ability. For the vast majority, this is a polished and practiced skill. It comes from repetition and muscle memory. Noel Birch was an American educational psychologist. You may not know his name off the top of your head, yet he was best known for his work in the field of employee training and development. He is particularly recognized for his contributions to the four stages of learning model. Some, including me, refer to this as the conscious competence learning model. This model was developed in the 1970s. It is now used in various fields to understand the process of acquiring new skills and knowledge. This framework describes the psychological states individual experience as they get new skills. It is how we can go from awkward to awesome. It takes but four easy steps. In Birch's method, we start from a place where we know nothing. This is unconscious incompetence. We don't know what we don't know, so we don't know if we are doing it well or less than well. But someone, usually a manager or trainer, takes pity on us and points us in a new direction. Here we start to learn a new and better way to attack our goals. We become aware of our lack of skills and may even work to get better. Eventually we pass into the conscious competence stage. Here we become proficient, but it takes work. We must exert extra effort and thought to accomplish the task. But through practice and patience, we can pass into the state of unconscious competence. This is where our skill level progresses to a point where it doesn't seem like work at all. It is almost effortless, as if we were a duck gliding across a pond. Each time we pass through a phase, it made us a bit uncomfortable, and that is where the learning took place. To me, that's a lot like learning to ride a bike. In the beginning, we have no balance, and when we begin to pedal, we will fall off. But every day when we get back on the bike, we go a little farther than the previous day. We still fall off, but it starts to get easier and easier with practice. Sure, there are skin, knees, and bruised muscles along the way, but the travel gets longer until that one day, that one day when you get on the bike and begin to pedal. At this point, you are going. You ride. You glide through the air like you've been doing it all your life. When in reality, you worked at it and passed through the stages of learning. You went from a place where you knew nothing to a place of proficiency. Your growth happened when it seemed the hardest and most uncomfortable. Controlling the conversation is a skill. It is a skill to practice. You can practice, but don't do it on your customers. That is a live fire exercise. Practice in your sales meetings. Practice with your coworkers. Practice on your family members or even a pet. If you can't find another human being, for many years I practiced on Sam, the cat. Affectionately, Sam was known as Big Fat Kitty. Sam was 25 pounds and did what he wanted. But tone, inflection, and an occasional treat could motivate BFK. The more I said the words out loud, the more comfortable I became with my phraseology and cadence. When I got into a live conversation, it was much more relaxed and polished. I knew what I was going to say next. I knew the direction to head, and I knew what questions to ask to arrive at my desired outcome. Sure, talking to the cat is weird, but it's only weird if it doesn't work. Controlling the conversation is a skill that involves influencing the direction, pace, and tone of the interaction. Effective conversational control can lead to better outcomes. This is how you can improve your relationships. It is the way you can get to a healthier conversational alignment with your customers. But controlling the conversation doesn't mean you have to use all the words. Dominating the dialogue doesn't control the conversation. It tells the other person they are unimportant. It tells them to take a back seat while you have the spotlight. It tells them you are not listening. And you are not listening because you are nervous. And you are nervous because you are either in stage one or stage two of your development. You haven't mastered the skill of conversational control. Control in a conversation doesn't mean using all the words. 
It involves actively engaging with others. It involves active listening, and that is a foundational skill. It requires you to pay close attention to what the other person is saying, and you can only do this when you yourself know where the conversation is headed. If you are nervous or don't know what to do, what to say, or where to go next, you won't be listening to what is said. When you relax and participate through active listening, it displays a genuine interest. You can convey this interest through verbal and nonverbal cues. By showing genuine interest, you create a positive atmosphere and build rapport, which lays the groundwork for that control. One of the big issues with sellers is we want to jump right into the selling. It is the adage of if you are a hammer, everything is a nail. We want to start selling without a plan. That is when salespeople become the cliche. We become unlikable because we are so focused on what we want, we don't stop to think about how to get the customer what they need. Before starting any selling conversation, it is best to define the goal. Stephen R. Covey was an American author, educator, and businessman. He was best known for his work on personal development and leadership. In his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he wrote, Begin with the end in mind. Understand what you aim to achieve. If you have a well-defined plan, it will influence the language you use. It will influence the questions you ask and the direction of the conversation. If not, you will revert to your highest level of learning and you will start selling without thinking. People are more likely to follow the lead of those they perceive as knowledgeable and credible. One way to establish or maintain control is to prove your mastery of the subject matter. Establish yourself as the expert. This is not done through talking, but through giving. Provide relevant information that only an expert would know. Things like market intelligence, economic trending, or in-market competitive rankings. Storytelling is a method that works here if it is relevant. Third-party endorsements also work to establish you as the subject matter authority. When you are the trusted voice, you carve out more space in your sales conversations. Your line of questioning helps set the tone and exert subtle control over the conversation. An expert is going to have better questions than a novice. Research and practice your questions. Talk more about business than about your product. Look to find an opportunity by solving a problem or uncovering a need. This will move you to the head of the class in no time. Frame your questions to encourage elaboration. Every person will tell you everything you need to know to sell them something. You need to ask the right questions and then listen long enough to the answers to find them. These are practice skills requiring patience and time. As Henry David Thoreau once wrote, the greatest compliment that was ever paid to me was when someone asked me what I thought and attended to my answer. For the novice seller, when the conversation veers off track, it is almost impossible to redirect it. For the polished expert, this is an anticipated obstacle. Because it is anticipated, it is a polished conversational redirect. The expert can guide the discussion back to key points and do this without dismissing the other person's contributions. This is a practiced skill. It can seem almost effortless to the outside observer, but the expert didn't become one overnight. They rode that bike. They bruised a shin or skinned a knee in the process. Don't get discouraged if you are not an expert on day one. Don't measure yourself against anyone but yourself. Mastery is an individual sport. Be sure you make progress daily and measure your subject competence against where you were yesterday. Watch the words you choose. Watch how you deliver them. Tone and inflection can influence responses. Stick to the positive rather than turn to the negative. Be descriptive yet positive. You don't have to say something is bad. You can substitute suboptimal. Accentuating the positive keeps the conversation on track. It helps you maintain emotional control. Maintaining emotional control is essential when steering a conversation. Avoid reacting in a rash manner to unexpected or challenging statements. A calm demeanor reinforces your control over the discussion and projects confidence. Improv theater is based on the unpredictability of situations. In this art form, actors are taught the yes and technique to extract more context and buy themselves more time. It involves accepting what someone has said, that is the yes part, and then adding to it the and part. This technique helps build on the conversation. It also keeps control in your hands. It encourages positive interaction. It allows for the introduction of new ideas. But if you have not practiced this and role-played its implementation, launching into it with a new person will make you look like a novice. It will cede control of the conversation. I would suggest doing this in your sales meetings. Do it so it becomes comfortable. Then it will be second nature in your sales practice.
The other method I like to use on sales calls, or any meeting for that matter, is an agenda. When you set the agenda, it's your meeting. It helps define each person's role and set the expectation for the outcome. If you're not using an agenda for each meeting, you are missing an opportunity. When someone commits to a business conversation with you, outline what is going to happen. Let them know what is going to transpire. It lets both parties prepare for the meeting. It puts one of those parties in charge of the content and the direction of the discussion. Wouldn't you rather that be you? A sales conversation without a plan is liable to go anywhere, and anyone can take control of it. When you establish the purpose and timing for your discussion, there is never confusion about what is going to happen and what is going to happen next. It sets the tone for the meeting and the outcome. This is the mark of a true master. It is unconscious competence. Selling is both an art and a science. The science is the easy part. The science is the mathematics about how many, at what level, and for how long. The art is the subtle part and the harder part. This is the skill level that takes practice and patience. The practice part is on us. We must work at our craft. We should be learning more about our chosen profession every day. It is not going to come to us through osmosis or some other act of nature. It is a skill. It is a muscle. We all have the control over whether it develops. The patience must be shared between us and our employers. There is no magic bullet or magic wand to make people good at selling on day one. It doesn't exist. Those looking for the easy button may want to choose a different profession. This is more like learning to ride a bike. Every person will develop at their speed. It is not always proportional to the effort. We must have the patience to allow it to develop. Controlling the conversation is a skill. It comes when we have reached the top level of our profession. Since it is a skill, it can be developed. It is developed through training and practice. And those two things sound an awful lot like work. If you aspire to be better than you were yesterday, you will put in the work. You will attend to the practice. You will seek out the knowledge and learn how to put it in play for yourself. Otherwise, you will be stuck at the novice level, wondering why every conversation doesn't result in a win. My new book, 52 Weekly Sales Meetings, is now available on Amazon.com. If you like what you have heard here today, please consider ordering a copy or two. You can always send one to a friend. Go to cdmediaconsulting.com right now and follow the instructions to order.